Hey there, YouTube land, and today, tonight, actually, as you can see from outside yeah, there. Yeah, it's clearly the middle of the night. I'm here with my son, Matt, who actually got his first Green Factory Summer Fear Order, which yes. is actually pretty cool. So I'm going to let him take over and show you what he got from his first time in Screen Factory Summer Fear. It's one more week to go. We'll talk with that maybe uh, after this. Maybe we'll yeah, we, we, we can make this possibly, this might not be the longest in the world. We can put that on at the end of the video. Um, first one. Uh, I guess I'll mention here is I got the double feature because this is what I originally got the whole thing for because Dad was like, "Oh, look, it's a Scream Factory sale, and look what it is! It's Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror." He said, "And you love anthology horror," and I was like, "I do. I absolutely love anthology horror." And I watched the Tales from the Crypt about a year ago again. It was really good. Um, so I I was like, I'll pick this one up. Uh, because I like both these films. I don't remember Vault of Horror as well. Uh, I do remember the Tom Baker story, but some of the other ones I'm not as familiar with. One of my favorite stories. Uh, the other ones I do like, though. I like, uh, the ones on, uh, I remember most of the ones on Tales from the Crypt, and it was really, really good. Uh, though the Monkey Paw story was hilarious. Like, that was just funny. Um. You don't remember the Vampire story in Vault of Horror? I think I kind of do. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while, but I like it, so I was like, I'll get this one. And I did, I got this one, look at it, it's in my hands, I own it. Right? So what else did you get? I also got, because I was like, Dad was like, well, if you get two, there's free shipping, and I'm like, I don't see any of the ones on this set that are, like, on the, like, weekly sale that are that, like, super exciting for me. Uh, he was like, well, let's look at what electric like constantly there, and I was like, there's a bunch of ones there, Swamp Thing's a good one. But then I saw Dark Man, and I was like, oh... Well, I've never actually seen Dark Man before. Well, I have now, but at the time. Uh, I was So I was like, well, it's a superhero movie, and I'm a big comic book guy, so let's watch it. And he looked like the design is cool and all that, so I was like, yeah, I'll watch. Like, I'll get Dark Man. I just watched it recently with my friends, and it was really good. It was really fun. Uh, I wish they did more with the character now. I love that they got, yes, you got Slip, which is good. I do. Uh, I super wish there was, like, more done with this character now. There's actually two more movies. Yeah, but not with Liam Neeson. And a comic book. It's like a six-issue comic book. I looked it up. Yeah. But, like, and that's especially sucky for me, who, like, uh, I don't think I've had the chance to mention this on the channel, ever, because yours is a horror movie channel, and I do comic book stuff a lot. Uh... I recently read through all of the Hellraiser comics from IDW, or, and I think it was Epic or something like that. Was it IDW? I can't remember. Was it Epic or... IDW did uh, the, the last time I was there. Okay, that was the one. All right. Epic was the one before. Or was it Boom? It was Boom. Boom. It was Boom. It was Boom. Uh, Epic is the one that did it back in the <laughs> 80s, which I was reading a bit of, but I didn't like the mythos they did there as much. Uh... And I, uh, I haven't read it yet, but I have, because I haven't seen the movies actually yet, but I have, uh, <coughs> the IDW sequel to The Fly. And those movies. Uh, yeah, I, <coughs> something in my throat. Um, but, uh, I watched, uh, I have those ready to read. And I've read a lot of other stuff. Halloween Night Dance. So I like when a movie is good, if it has, like, a comic book follow-up, and this would can you get me a water or something? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm dying. I just... The, I'm like... Dying here. It's, <laughs> the title of the video is going to be, like, Special Guest Matthew Unboxing Plus Death Plus <laughs> Instant Death. But, uh, I really like it when uh, characters are like... Especially ones like this, like... <clears throat> better? Third movie. Like Dark movie. Man, who, uh... Who works perfectly. And his design and his abilities are really interesting. I don't know but, Miles uh, from the Mummy series plays Dark Man in the next two movies. Oh, does he? Yeah, uh, he's actually good in part. Part three is the best of the sequel. Because I know the second one is called like <coughs> Re the Return of Dresden or whatever. His Durant. Name? Durant. That's right. Durant, the the weird killer. So, did you happen to get anything else during the Scream Factory? Uh, yeah. well, I was Something waiting. That I didn't get. I was waiting on the coasters because you said there was going to be coasters. And I, yeah. And I opened it. Oh, that's where you put it. Uh, and and I opened it up and I was like, well. Here's a like a, a package here. I was like, let me open it up. Let me get the coasters out. And I, I opened it up and I was like, look, this isn't a, 
this isn't coasters. And I looked at my invoice and it says, uh, it's like Tales from this Crib, Vault of Horror, Double Feature, Dark Man, and Secret Gift from the Summer of Fear? And I'm like, oh, snap! It's the special limited edition issue of Fangoria, all about Scream Factory and all of its tasty goodness, featuring rare exclusive interviews and photos. And all the and reviews. Too. All the reviews for every one of them, which I've been like periodically going through whenever I'm like, hmm, do I want to pick that up? Which is really useful, though I don't agree with their review of Vault of Horror that much. That's a much better or, movie for the taste. Give it for it. Or the review for Tales from the Crypt, because I really, really like Tales from the Crypt, the movie. But the review calls it one of the scariest horror movies of all time. And I'm like, all right, calm down now. That was a good movie, but it's not one of the scariest horror movies of all time. Nowhere near that. So uh, let's talk. There's only a few days left to the Scream Factory set. There is. So uh, if you're going to get anything, you know what's you have it soon. weird? What? Like, this is a rare special edition mm. you can only get it through order, right? Yeah. It's got a $10 price thing on it. That's how much we got. We oh, got. I, I guess that's good to know. I... Alright, so... <laughs> there's six new ones here. There are. So let's look at them now. So, there are... And I can, I'll take the ones that I got so we can actually look at them. Now, one of them you can't get here in Canada because, unfortunately, because of race issues, the battery, which is one of them, it, which is a movie that I strongly recommend. It's a very, it's a fantastic film. It's not for everybody. It's a slower moving movie. It's a slow burn. It's not your average like gore fest zombie film. It's not that type of zombie film. It is a character study. So if you don't like that type of thing, you're probably not gonna like the battery. Mm. Me personally, I thought it was a really good film. But uh, I know it's not a real thing, but I kind of want that Scream Factory ice box. <laughs> so uh, first up is uh, well, aside from the ba battery, so second up, I guess is Lords of Illusion. This is the uh, collector's edition. This one will be available. Yep. As you can see. And let you see the uh, other cover as well. Nice. So this one has uh, the theatrical cut of the film on, uh, on disc one. This two gives you an all new high definition transfer of the Clive Barker director cut, commentary by Barker, gathering a magi magic featurette, original behind the scenes feet footage, deleted scenes, new interview with storyboard artist Martin Mercer and photo gallery. So it's actually pretty cool. You get a director's and theatrical cut, kind of like you do with Nightbreed. So, uh, and I love Nightbreed. Yeah, this is this is not as good as Nightbreed, but it is a good film. I did like this movie. So yeah. is this one you're looking at? Well, I can tell you right now, everyone you're going to show off here are the ones I'm looking at. I don't care as much for Love Bites and the other ones. Oh, uh, we're not there yet. No, I know, I know. I know we're not there yet. But like, uh, the ones that I'm looking at are the ones that you already have. Huh. So, And they're good ones. Next up is a classic that I watch every Halloween starting this year because I, mean, I just got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a classic. It's a tradition I've never heard of, despite but, the fact I've been here for 20 years. But, this but is I'm a sure Halloween. it's traditional. <laughs> it's a classic Halloween type. It's, it's it kind of like a, it's pumpkin head. It's a southern gothic type of uh, horror film. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a return to the monster film. Back in the day, there was a lot of monster movies. At this, around this time, slashers and where the kid, where the king. That's what we got most of the time. There were yeah. no monsters anymore. Stan Winston, rest in peace, brought back the monsters with this incredible film starring Lance Henriksen, who is an amazing actor. That is Pumpkinhead. Uh, are there features? You're damn right, there are features. This is a really great film. We got tribute to Stan Winston on here with actors Lance Henriksen and Brian uh, Bremer, special effects artist Alec Gillis. Tom Woodruff Jr., Shannon Shea, and more. New interviews with producers and actors. Uh, audio commentaries are on here. FX stuff, six featurettes. Just amazing stuff. It's, yeah. It is loaded. And just so you can see the original case. Very nice. Now, and my better half's favorite film out of, out of the head of the series was Pumpkinhead 2. Actually, Bloodline, Bloodwings. And uh, this one has a, quite a cast. We got Steve Canale, Canale from uh, Dallas, actually, fame. We have uh, Andrew Robinson, of course, from uh, from Hellraiser, yeah. and from A Dirty Harry. Amy Dolans, who uh, was a famous actress in the uh, '80s, she's actually the daughter of a Mickey Dolans from The Monkees. Um, we have uh, oh, Sh Lenny Quigley's in this one here. Uh, Bill Clinton's uh, brother, Roger Clinton, is in this Seriously? movie. He's the mayor. Uh, <clears throat> Soleil Moon Fry, who was Punky Brewster, is all grown up and looks very good, and she's in this film. And uh, it is filled with uh, with a bunch of like really. Uh, Cool actors, and it's uh, it was done by Jeff Burr, who directed uh, no, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Three, okay, among other films, uh, and uh, 
pumpkin, pumpkinhead to Budwings. And I got to say, the features on this, the interviews are really, really good. I like the cover. It's got some great stuff. And there is a uh, By the way. secondary cover for this one. Yeah. Which I think is actually pretty cool, kind of cool, kind of cheesy cool. So I'll let you guys know. I think they're both worth having. So if you're going to get one, make sure you grab the other. Don't just grab one. I know you can go like, oh, well, I want to get the collector's edition. That's it. But I, I wouldn't. I would go for both of them. They're actually very good films. So there's two more. There's two more that I'm looking at, actually, that uh, he's not. Basically, because I want all the double features, and I like some of the cheesier stuff. And So let's let you talk about those first while I go Me finish getting my tea. Them? Yep. Oh, okay. This is going to be interesting. As a... I'm sure you know lots about these films. All right. So the first one is... Uh... Uh, God, what is it called again? Love at First Bite and Once Bitten. Uh, these are clearly two, uh, two vampire love story movies, I'm assuming. Uh, Comedy vampire films. What? Comedy vampire films. Comedy vampire films, which I'm assuming has some love aspect because you know of the... Anything, but do you, have you seen them? No, um, because I'm not actually a big <laughs> vampire guy. Love at First Bite was George, was a George Hamilton classic film. A lot, this is around the time he did this one and he did Zorro the Gay Blade. Where he played a Zorro and Zorro's uh, uh, gay twin brother, who was as a more flamboyant costume. Now, Love at First Bite is really funny, and what's really cool about it is that when my dad originally saw this movie, he saw this in theater. Uh, so when he watched it on uh, VHS, the music was taken out. There's some rights issues at the time with the music. So there's a really cool scene in the, in the nightclub where Dracula's dancing, and it's supposed to be uh, I love the nightlife, I like the boogie playing, but this totally uh, inappropriate song plays in, in place of it. In this version here, you're going to get the original song again, so it's really cool to get that back. There's a lot of really cool stuff in it. It's very kitschy, very fun. It's probably my favorite, like, of the vampire, uh, like, Dracula type of comedy movies. And now, Once Bitten is a horrible film. Uh, it is Jim Carrey's first film. You get start to see some of Jim Carrey's rubber face oh, type God, thing. No. Lauren Hutton is in it. Uh, is it a good movie? No, but there are some decent aspects in it to, uh, to want to own it. Basically, you get to see some of the physicality that Jim Carrey would do later on in much better when he was in much better films. But it's get it's worth getting for love at first play alone. This one here, unfortunately, guys, ha has no uh, has no features, just theatrical trailers. Now, the next one up is Vampire's Kiss. The only one Kiss here that's interesting to me. And High Spirits. Now, High Spirits, we'll, we'll talk about first. High Spirits started uh, Peter O'Toole, yeah. you know, Lawrence of Arabia, uh, at Steve Gutenberg, who was Police Academy. And I think it's Daryl Hannah, isn't it? Uh... I'm going to guess. It's a one girl. I think it pretty much sure it's Daryl Hannah from uh, Splash. And basically, it's a pretty standard comedy. It's pretty good. It's fun. It's nothing like... You're not going to be like, well, this movie I had to have. But I thought it was a good film. Now, Vampire's Kiss is an underrated little classic uh, comedy there. It's very oh, different. It's crap. not exactly what you think it's going to be. But it's Nicholas Nicolas Cage, Cage is all a I dickhead care about. that plays a pretty much... He plays a very Patrick Bateman type of character. He's an asshole. He's a yuppie. It's the 80s. <clears throat> he treats people like dirt. He's really coming off as... And all of a sudden, he meets this girl one night, and uh, he thinks she's a vampire. She's played by Jennifer Beals. And uh, she she bites him, and so he suddenly thinks he's a vampire. Is he a vampire? Well, you got to watch the movie to find out. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of hilarious. There's a great cast. What's really neat about this movie is that for a long time, there was rumors going around that Nicolas Cage was embarrassed of the movie. They want to talk about it. They want to do anything about it. Well... Rumors are laid to rest now because Nicholas Cage does a commentary on this one here with That's the director. That's amazing. The which is awesome. Nicholas Cage says oh that God. this he did the commentary on this basically so that he, that he hoped people would get to discover this little film that he made, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I'm really interested oh. in listening to the Nicholas Cage commentary. Man, I want to listen. To I really Cage am. Commentary. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Nicholas Cage gets a lot of crap, but I think Nicholas Cage actually is a good actor. Uh, he's yeah, he's made some questionable choices and does some questionable movies, but in when Nicholas Cage is is on, you know, is on the ball. He really is on the ball. Nicholas Cage is a Coppola, and it shows. <clears throat> the stuff that he, some stuff that he does, is just incredible. There's some pretty crappy stuff that Nicholas Cage has made. Yeah, right most of it, yeah, but that even that is like hilariously bad. Wicker Man is a movie that you got to watch this because what the hell is going on? It just doesn't make any sense. And even when it does make sense, you don't care. Uh, it's hilarious though, and Nicholas Cage seems to like just take movies like, just goes just as like basically. Yeah, I'll make that movie. Yeah, <laughs> but um, he had some great movies. The Leaving Las Vegas stuff, that, that early stuff that he did, you know, really good. And I thought Vampire's Kiss was actually a really good uh, Nicholas Cage portrayal. It's crazy over the top Nicholas Cage, but it really suits the film. Unlike ones where he just seems to be crazy and over the top, just because he's Nicholas Cage, it totally makes sense for the character in this film here. 
So uh, those both those double features are high on my want list. Whether I'm going to pick them up or not, it's going to depend on uh, on finances. So we'll see. Maybe hopefully I'll be un unboxing those too, and maybe I'll get that magazine because I'm so jealous of it. What do you uh, think maybe I'll get the phones? coasters. Uh, um, we should mention the battery, which uh, I also have on Anchor Bay and the DVD edition. I would really love to upgrade that. Unfortunately, they do not send it to Canada. It's only in the U.S. Uh, the battery is a cool film. Uh, it's not for everybody. It's a character study. i got to remind you of that again. It is a slow-moving film. It's about two guys that are basically living through the uh, the uh, zombie, po zombie apocalypse. And, you know, they're going around... Uh, Trying, you know, they're lonely. They're trying to find people. One person is really lonely. Broke his girlfriend. It's always kind of. It, so yeah, take it as it is. It's not yeah. exactly the most exciting film in the world, but it's one that I did enjoy. Your thoughts on those films? Will I go finish making my tea? Okay. Um. I mean, Lords of Illusion. I'm still in the process. I, I know it's still because I've had it for a while. I just I've been doing a lot of stuff, so I haven't got to get to it. I'm halfway through. Uh, Scarlet Gospels. So I want to see a bit more of uh, Henry D. Moore. So that'll be nice. I kind of want to see that. And I like, I love the Hellraiser movies. Uh, I like a lot of Clive Barker stuff. The game Jericho is passable. Uh, so that's gonna, that's something I'm interested in. Pumpkinhead and Pumpkinhead 2 I'm interested in. Solely for the fact that, you know, it looks like it's probably going to be fun. Uh, I haven't seen either of the movies. The design of the creature looks really cool. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it in a movie. Uh, the design of the creature looks really cool, so Amazing. I'm curious. Uh, I don't give a shit about Love at First Bite or Once Bitten. Just don't care about them. I'm not a big vampire guy, honestly. Very few things like that have vampires in them really catch me. Uh, High Spirits I know nothing about whatsoever. So... So should we Nicolas Cage, I want to watch only the Nicolas Cage movie, uh, Vampire's Kiss. I only want to watch with the Nicolas Cage commentary on. And on that note, Nicolas Cage is actually a really big comic book fan. I would like to see him in a comic book movie, like legitimately good, with a character that makes sense for him in a comic book movie now. Because that guy deserves it. He changed his name to reflect his favorite comic book character, Luke Cage. That's hilarious and awesome, and he's cool. And the Ghost Rider movies were awful. So, should we take a minute to go over the, uh, the the originals? The, the what? The the old favorites page. Uh, really quickly. I guess. And the horror trilogy still on <clears throat> sale for for forty two ninety nine. What are your thoughts? Uh, I like the Amityville Horror though. It freaked me out. The original documentary freaked me out as a kid about it. The uh, second one is the best in the series of the three. That's my personal opinion. Uh, I really think that that's worth it if you don't have the box set. It's a really cool box set and worth picking up. They have not come out uh, as single editions that, as of yet, and that seems to be the only way to get these in Blu-ray. If you've got a 3D TV, owe it to yourself to have Anvil 3D in your collection. Next up, Silent Precinct 13, the original John Carpenter film. I know nothing about it, really, honestly. Like, I know a little bit because you... Uh you mentioned it once, and I read the article in the magazine where uh, yeah. <clears throat> Nathan Thomas Milner uh, says that he wishes he like he really likes the cover for it. I think he wanted to do it originally, but he didn't get the chance. I like that song of Precinct 30. Yeah. It's got one of the best scores. of uh, Carpenter's really good with his musical scores. I think this one is really, really good. Uh, if you're a Carpenter fan, definitely pick it up. Next up, you did see this one. It's The Burning. Oh, uh, The Burning was really good, and I really like the cover. A lot of this stuff comes down to me with, like, did I like the movie? Yes. Is the cover really good? Yes. Because those covers, like, one of the best parts about Scream Factor is those damn fine covers. But to be fair, I, I, I prefer the more artistic covers. It's like down there you see the Eve co cover, which is, eh. Uh, like burn it, that burning cover, which is a really good movie on its own standpoint. And it has some cool features. Yeah. So most of the features are, are ported over from the MGM release, but still... Burning in high def, worth getting. Uh, Crawl Space. Really good cover again. I love this movie. I love that. And what's that little short film? P please, kill Mr. Kinski. I can't mention that enough. It's eleven ninety nine, guys. If you don't own Crawl Space, now's the time to grab Crawl Space. Huh? Dark Man. Shitty movie. I'd never pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great one. Yeah. Uh, Eve of Destruction. Mm. I picked it up. It was my first pickup from the sale. Oh, is it a great three film? <clears throat> yeah, it is, actually. I'm having a conversation with you. I'm a huge uh, 
dancing fan. Uh, Burschnikov, Gregor Hines, guys. That uh, Gregor Hines was one of those guys that got me into tap class when I was younger when I was doing uh, acting. Uh, I did uh, enjoy the movie. It's fun. It's very cheesy. It's very kitschy. Again, it's an 80s like action movie. Kind of, it's a canon film. So if you're into that, you, you should have it. Uh, it, it's not a must-have on you know, your Screen Factory collection, but for me, it is a must-have because I do like those action movies. It's kind of sci-fi. This one's kind of a female Terminator type of thing with a little bit of species thrown in before species came around. The Fog. Classic movie. Got on it. Uh, it's good. Thankfully, not the Tom Welling one. Which is, <laughs> that was, which is horrible. <laughs> much as I like Tom Welling, no thank you. From it's Beyond. A, uh, that's... That's a must. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you don't have From Beyond in your collection, please... Get from beyond. It's really, really good. I should preface that I like. I got a couple movies in there on here. I'm not. A, I'm not dad. I'm not like a big collector ass guy. Of I collect comics a lot, but uh, like I'm like I'm thinking of ordering again just because I kind of want uh, Lords of Illusion, and I see from beyond there, and I'm like, well, from beyond. I'm like, I didn't even know. I didn't even remember it was on the sale. Yeah, it's uh, there's one that really I totally. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know it was on it before, but yeah, it is from beyond. So what we got in from beyond? Well, we have Jeffrey Coombs, who's amazing, from Reanimator. We have Ken Forte from Don the Dead. We have Barbara Crampton in Leather. Jeffrey Coombs has made like a tiny career out of doing H.P. Lovecraft films. Oh, yeah. Another comment. This is a truly classic kind of cheesy fun, cheese fest from the 80s. I, I like it. It's a lot of fun. It's not for everybody, but it's one that I really, really do enjoy. It's got three commentaries on there, by the way. Next up is one that I did have to pick up when it came out. That's Ninja 3, The Domination. Again, another cheesy canon action film. How can you not like this? It's got Sho Kazuji, the master of the ninja films. It's got a... Excuse me, I can't remember her name right now. Uh, uh, lady? Lady with sword? Sword lady? Uh, she was in Electric Boogaloo. And, and, you know, and oh, Breaking yeah, Breaking my too. favorite movie. <laughs> so anyway, she was a big uh, actress for, uh, for, a lot, for a lot of the canon. She was a go-to girl. She gets to play an aerobics instructor that is possessed by... Uh, Spirit of a Ninja. And uh, you have, must remember, only Ninja can kill a Ninja. Is it? Ninja? <clears throat> All right. Prison. An early movie with Viggo Mortensen. This is the movie that Rainy Harley really did. Nice this is the movie that John Carr Bushler did the effects on. This is the movie that Kane Hodder did stunt work on and got on the role of, for Jason Voorhees for Friday the 13th Part 7 which, J J which John Carr Bushler directed. Psycho 2. Psycho 2 and Psycho 3. Both really fun films. Uh, Richard Franklin, for the Australian director, directed Psycho 2. Uh, Psycho 3 was actually directed by Anthony Perkins himself. It's kind of a sleazy slasher film. It's really cool. It's got uh, Jeff Fahey in it. It was actually originally supposed to be the killer, but at the end he decided to go back with Norman. And, uh, oops, spoiler alert. <laughs> but one thing that is not spoiling it, there are two awesome commentaries on these here. One on Psycho 2 and one on Psycho 3. The commentaries are by the screenwriters. And as a writer myself, i got to say, these are amazing commentaries. Any of those there on your, on your list? So, uh, Ned Comet, Ninja, Ninja 3, Prison, Psycho 2, or something Any of those on my list? Yeah. Uh, I really like the cover for Prison, honestly. I really like that cover. Uh, you know, that's one of the most disliked covers in the in Screen Factory story. Seriously? It is. I love the, like, skull over the prison design. It's really nice. Oh, that is actually the cool one. If you turn it over, that actually, that's the original thing. It's the skull. Oh, It's wow. the face of Viggo Mortensen's face that actually uh, people turn to off and stuff. I kind of get it, but like I love that background image. So next up is TV tears. TV tears. I love to see more people buy this. It's got uh, two TV horror films: Initiation of Sarah and Are You in the House Alone. Uh, for me, that's one I do want to get. I don't have it yet, uh, but I'd love to like see them do more of that stuff. Me and you were having a talk before this about uh, TV horror. Yeah, because we talked about. I asked why like the other two psycho films weren't. Because available. they said Psycho, Psycho 1 was obvious because of the whole Universal thing. Uh, but Psycho 4 was first because... One. What? First one was because of Psycho Yeah, yeah. first one. But, uh, but Psycho 4, you said, was because it was a TV movie. Yeah, and there was like... And yet, yeah. right on the listing, if you're right next to it, yeah. it's two TV movies. Well, they said, you know, we our TV movies didn't do that well, so we're not going to do any more like that. I mean, nobody wants it anyway. Thing here. Come on, but, people want that. Yeah, still, no, they do. I want still Psycho. a Psycho movie. Do Come it, on, yeah. Man. Give us another double feature... Put Psycho 4 on there, put Bates Motel. The uh, trailer, not the, uh, the new, the, the pilot from the 80s, not the uh, new series. Yeah, that'd be a pretty big set for that. Uh, Swamp Thing. Uh, Swamp I love Thing. it, I got it, uh, because I'm a big comic book fan, I'm a huge fan of Swamp Thing. Uh, it's got some cool features on there, uh, great edition. It's not the uncut, a European cut, because that's not available or allowed to be available anymore, but uh, they did a great uh, remastering of that, I did like this one. The, the 
gem of the sets, if you don't have them, is Terra Vision and the Video Dead. This is a great double feature. Terra Vision is a full moon picture. It's an empire picture. Oh. It is Charles Band. It's got Richard Band doing the music. It's got some great stuff. Fantastic cast. Funny movie. Incredible thing. The monster in it is awesome. Are they tiny? Because that's usually a Charles Band No, thing. there's like a huge monster that actually oh, can take on people's like form, sort of. Oh, that's I mean, really people. cool. Uh, Video Dead was one where basically you wanted to see this movie because that cover is really awesome. Uh, is, does, is Video Dead as good as the cover? No, not half as good as the cover, but it is a fun film. It's a very cheesy film. It's Both zombies that's coming out awesome. of a TV set. Think about that. And you know what? Those movies there, actually, even though it's a double feature, and usually you get like a trailer or like an interview on them, both of them actually have some really good features on there. Uh, Terrorvision, I know, is packed with features. Uh, next up is They Live. This is a movie that uh, everybody pretty much started buying Screen Factory. I was buying Screen Factory from the beginning, but a lot of people that I know, they started buying They Live because this was one that a lot of people wanted. John Carpenter film, of course, everybody knows that line. You want to say that line? Uh, I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Yeah. Also, I'm actually chewing bubble gum right now. I have in this entire video, so... That's a bit of a lie, a little bit of a misdirection. But it's an amazing film. Actually, little fun fact about stuff that has nothing to do with this film. Uh, in the game Saints Row 4, uh, uh, Roddy Roddy Piper is a summonable, like, bro that, like, appears and stuff like that. And so is, uh, what's his name? The guy who plays his best friend. Oh, the Keith David. Keith David. Both of them are in the game. So when, uh, He's introduced. It's them having the fight in the alleyway. One of the most epic fights ever, yeah. And it because that entire game is about aliens, it leads up to that like on the roof breaking satellites with Roddy Roddy Piper, and he meant and like some of the lines from the film are in it, and I'm like, this is awesome. I love that. And turn the dreaded sun down. Charles B. Pierce film. Not only does this give you one Charles B. Pierce film, it gives you two actually. It gives you the Victors with Je with the gorgeous Jessica Harper. Who you um, know, all know from Suspiria and from, of course, the other uh, Phantom of Paradise, which I don't have for some reason. And what other movie does she, she do? What other? Oh, uh, Shock Treatment. Yes, Shock Treatment, the sequel to Rock Super underrated Shock. movie. <clears throat> exactly. Except for what one song. Without warning, uh, it's a fun alien film. It's got a lot of people in it. We got, I think it's Neville Brin, Martin Landau, uh, I think it's Jack Palance. It's, it's, it's a bunch of people. Anyway, I like this movie. It's not for everybody, but I, I find it really fun. Of course, it's a screen. My favorite movie? T shirt. T-shirt. That's the greatest movie of all time. Uh, done by T-shirt. Uh, it's really good. So, out of all these here, TV Terror, Swamp Thing, The Double Feature Terrorism, Video Dead, They Live, Ten the Dread Sundown, Without Warning, T-shirt, The Movie. <laughs> what, what would you buy? Uh, Swamp Thing, Terrorism, Video Dead, uh, obviously Swamp Thing, comic book guy. Terrorism, Video Dead, both those covers look awesome. I love the Terrorism cover right there. It's amazing. It's got some great features on there, too. Uh, they Live, I don't, I don't see that cover. Mm. But uh, I'm not a big fan of the cover, but I'm a fan of the movie. That's one of the bit most liked covers. Really? Really. Really? Because that's kind of... I love the Tenet Dread Sunday. It's a bit schlocky. Yeah, this Tenet Dread Sunday comes down. I can't speak English today. And as good as that Without Warning cover is, I've got to show you guys the other cover for Without Warning, because it is really freaking awesome. Without Warning, yeah, it's a pretty nice cover. It's actually really good. Tenet Dread Sundown, which I can finally say with English. Oh, that's really nice. That's the other cover for that warning called, called came from that came with that warning. I do love this cover. And these creatures are actually in the film. Are okay. they? Yeah. <laughs> Little Langolier looking things. I, I thought of them as looking like something else, but we'll call them yeah, Langolier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and you know, T-shirt, the movie, uh, good production value. Uh, I might watch it. Yeah. Gotta watch it. Actually, I actually wouldn't mind having a Screen Factory T-shirt. Hey, Screen mm -hmm. Factory. I do a lot of your <laughs> your videos here. I'm Just not saying. saying anything big, <laughs> yeah. but uh, but you know you. Mm, I didn't even. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just like those coasters. Hopefully that comes with. Yeah, point. so here are the coasters again, guys. For you guys that the one thing he he got that I didn't get. So it's a Screen Factory coaster, basically it's the same on each side. It, this one has, uh, of course, the Serpent and the Rainbow, and uh, the you know people under the stairs. This one here, I love this one. Uh, Class of 1984, it's the movie I really want. Oh, seriously? That's awesome, I love that movie. And uh, Terror Train. I like Revenge movies. Sleepaway Camp. And uh, The Burning. The Burning, it's for me. I like both of The Burning. Escape from New York. 
and of course the classic Nightbreed. Oh. So I don't know if I want to put my drinks on those. Oh, I'm definitely not putting my drinks on those. <laughs> it also was neat that they did actually give me a uh, a catalog. Did you get oh. that too? No, I didn't cool. get the catalog. Well then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't get the catalog. I just got special limited edition issue. I so, while well, you do that, I'll, I'll read one of any review for any of the screen <laughs> factories at all. So, what are you looking to? Uh, so, you're thinking about getting something. I'm thinking I'm going to get those two double features. What are you going to get? What do you, what, what are the big things on your list? What's the tops on your list uh, right now? Well, I, I want I want Lord of Illusion, and I thought like maybe Pumpkinhead and Pumpkinhead Two, but honestly. Uh, it's also like TerraVision and the video Dead look good. I like I'd like to see TerraVision. Uh, from Beyond. I didn't realize it was a part of the sale. Now that I know, I kind of want it. So I do. I do like. Uh, I, I love those like Lovecraft films, uh, and that movie was really good. Are you seriously saying that you're not going to grab Ninja Three? I'm too, totally not going to grab it. Your destruction. Um, yeah. And TV tariffs. I'm, those are literally the worst. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. Ninja, Ninja, Ninja 3 is probably funny. Uh, I will say, though, that Prison has an awesome cover. I can understand the face thing getting in the way for people. I'd like it if there was a version. Would you like to see the cover of Prison close-up? Yeah, I would. Uh... Because I'd also like I'd like a version of that cover without the face on it, probably as well. There's Actually, a version. I'd... I'll show you. Okay, because I'd like that poster just on my wall, to be honest. All right, so let's see what we got here. Uh, uh, keep it talking while I'm looking for the stuff. Okay. Uh, I don't understand why people like the "They Live" cover. Actually, it's not very good. Uh, I remember the first. Tech Maybe point. once I show it to you close up, you'll be like, "I uh, am." Dad showed me like. I remember when we were looking for They Live when it came out around Christmas time, was it? Yeah. Uh, and like you were like, I'm looking for this film, like this, like this really good They Live. And this is technically one of the first times I had heard about. Uh, 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 about Scream Factory. It's like, look at this ver like version that this this company called Scream Factory did, uh, that I've been like doing stuff with, and I'm like, I wish I was doing something. No, like, you know what I mean, like yeah, getting fine. stuff from, and I'm like. It's cool. Like, I like They Live, but this cover is, like... So, here we go, guys. Uh, I won't bring over the uh, second ones. I got those on a DVD. I'll show you the Blu-rays of this one there. So, Matthew, there's Eve of Destruction. So, Eve of Destruction, guys, so you know what, you get, what you're getting. Uh, there are no features on this, on this one. Oh. <clears throat> this is Ninja 3, Domination. Okay. It, uh, it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. And there's a commentary. So I don't even, like, this wasn't even a question of, like, what are you getting? You literally have them all over there. I'm going to show you. Town of Dread Sundown, yeah. very nice. Town of Dread Sundown also comes with, of course, the Evictor. And, of course, there's special features. There is another commentary with the Town of Dread Sundown. And there's an interview with Don Wells, of course, who played, uh, uh, well, what's she, Mary, Mary Ann on, uh, on Gilligan's Island, who gets shot in this movie. You know. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Essay by Brian Albright. And plus there's this, the... Extra film, the Victor. So it, it comes to me now that maybe we should have actually pulled these out while we were talking about them. Look at that. <laughs> or not throw them at my face. <laughs> <laughs> that's also Next an idea, maybe. This, one, this is probably one of the most awesome covers, like this guy's. Oh, man, that's really cool. Shit. Do that terror vision cover, that video dad. I love that video dad. A lot of these I would love to have as posters. By the way, do they sell posters? As for features. Uh, the feature, when you buy, if you buy them originally, I thought it was in posters. Oh, collectors, they should only them. No, they should sell so, posters. Terror vision comes with an audio commentary. Monsters on Demand, the making of the original retrospective, uh, with, with all of them. Poster and still gallery. We got the video data, also has an audio commentary. I'm sorry. The video data has two. Two, count them. Two audio commentaries. Two. Uh, uh, uh. Interview with the makeup guy and, and the makeup assistant. Uh, behind the scenes still gallery. That's a lot for uh, that. And by the way, this is actually a, a DVD Blu ray combo pack. So they don't sell posters anymore. Mm. They used to come with the originals? With the, with the collector's editions only, though. So unfortunately, that they never should, been posted. They should really like have it that like maybe autographed posters come with collector's editions, and that they sell these posters because I would pay like out the ass for having like this or especially like the video dead one on my wall. See, so this is probably my least favorite of all the artwork that Screen Factory has ever done. I don't know. Night of the Comet. 
Sounds pretty. Yeah. And even yeah. The, the the extra cover. Yeah, I'm not really it's a like fan. A completely different film. But it has like a three other commentaries on it. Oh, look at that from Beyond. From Beyond, I do love this one. That one's really nice. So there's from Beyond, uh, and here's the alternate cover. That's pretty cool. Uh, features on From Beyond, audio commentary again, Stuart Gordon, new interview with Barbara Crampton, director's perspective featurette, the editing room, lost and found f featurette, footage of like a bonus, uh, like uh, scenes and stuff, yeah. interview with composer Richard Band, Richard Band did the music okay. for this, okay. photo gallery, storyboard to film comparison with introduction, and more. Nice. And more is, and more is my favorite. Usually, and more actually means something cool in there. Yeah, Parts next up more is The Fog. Like... I love this cover, actually. It's pretty good. Pretty good cover. First, the original cover. You I think it's a very standard cover, but yeah, it's better than the original. Uh, as again, we have a uh, auto commentary with the writer director John Carpenter and uh, the late Deborah Hill. There's a new auto commentary with Adrian Barbeau, Tom Atkins, the man, Tom Atkins, the man, the mustache. Uh, we have uh, Tales from the Mist Inside the Fog, new interview with Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, Fear on Fear on Film Inside the Fog featurette, the Fog storyboard. Horror's Hollow Grounds is on this way to go back a new look at this. Yeah, there's an article on that in Van Gogh. Horror's Hollow Grounds. That's Grand. one of their favorite. Too. They Live actually does have a kick-ass cover. I actually I, do like that. My favorite's The Buy. No, uh, I don't know. It's too busy. It's uh, way too busy, that cover. It's the dude, though, man. The dude designs. It's too busy. All these, all like, these covers there's are too much busy. on the cover. This is why, like, the next one here, which you have, uh, which I'm going to throw up anyways. Out of commentary with John Carpenter like, and Roddy Piper. A new interview with John Carpenter making of. Man. If you compare these two, like, The Burning, like, there's a simplistic, like... Like, there's a lot to the cover, but it's simple, and it's like... It does give away the killer's look, though, which probably oh, shouldn't do. Oh, yeah, but <clears throat> it's coordinated, and a lot of people are buying these and movies. And it's definitely no way, way better than the uh, Harlequin romance-looking original co cover of uh, The Burning. Yeah, but, like... What's the original cover of And some great features on here, by the way. Audio commentary by director. Uh, there's a Blood and Free Fire no, Memories type trailer and more. And when we talk about more here, we're talking about stuff, Savani stuff. So, some great stuff there. That original day of the cover is better. And the... Uh, Next, uh, last but not least, is Assault on Precinct 13, which, by the way, original cover is one of my favorite covers. Huh. That is freaking grindhouse freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, like new interview way. with actress Nancy Loomis case, art director uh, Tommy Wallace, audio commentary by John Carpenter, interview with Carpenter and actor Austin Stoker, Tyco Trailer, Radio Spots. This is a brutal movie, guys. If you uh, don't like brutality movie so it's not brutal in that type of way but there's like yeah there's some deaths in this one yeah so there we go that, that's the screen factory things except for the only ones I didn't bring over was Swamp Thing and uh I think the you didn't bring over Prison I didn't bring over Prison no you didn't because you were like I'm gonna show you the Prison cover and I was like let me see what the original Prison cover is I'll grab it I got Swamp Thing too oh you might as well bring these over Alright, so, here we go. We're about to end the video, but I wanted to see the prison cover, so... So, well, the prison cover's gonna be last. It's gonna be like, you're gonna have to wait for it. Oh, god. So, uh, I got the DVDs, but this is, but there's Psycho, Psycho 2, two. Audio Commentary, uh, a vintage, uh, video and audio interviews with a Anthony Perkins. Okay. We've got Psycho 3 as the Audio Commentary and an interview with Kate Shea and an interview with Brink Stevens, who did it. We did some uh, awesome work in this. So some there's some interviews. covers. For I do like time. them, actually. They had to keep the covers the same, or, or there's rights issues. Oh, really? Uh, Swamp Thing. Awesome. They got some interviews, auto commentaries. Interview with Adrian Barbeau on here. An interview with creator Lynn Wynn. Win oh. The comic book creator. Awesome. So, pretty cool stuff there. And last but not least, you wanted to see it? I did. I, t I turned it around. Okay. That's pretty sweet. This is the other cover. See, let me just look at the things. Uh, I wish that there was a cover that was the more like almost like decaying skull like this. What is this? But like it's... just it. So really this cool. is the other cover for uh, Prison, by the way, just so you guys can see. I like it. I like the original cover just a little better. So it's kind of yeah. like 3D. And uh, it does have a lot of features, just so you, you can see it right there. we got uh, auto commentary. it has got hard times of making up. It's a really good making up, by the way. Uh, and they talk to C. Courtney Joyner, stunt coordinator Kane Hodder, pick producer Charles Band, uh, composer Richard Band. Jesus. Uh, there's a lot of Charles Band stuff on this stuff. So. Poster still to go. Original first draft screenplay in PDF formats on here, by the way. I think that's the only one that they put a screen 
play on, which is actually really cool. You can actually read the uh, PDF cool. screenplay. Cool. So i got to put all these back now. Guys, uh, for me right now, it really is time for tea. i got my tea over there getting cold. Um, yeah. And Matthew? Uh, oh. oh, this is a weird one to do a zinger for, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is an unboxing slash, like, trail of thought, like, summer sale video. Uh, who? Um, well, while I'm waiting for him, let me know in the comment section down below if you're going to be getting anything for the last week of the Summer of Fear sale. Only got a couple more days to get it, guys. So uh, get that in there. So Summer of Fear 2015. Awesome stuff for me right now. It's time for tea. I am out of here, and I'm leaving it to myself. All right. Uh, because this is relevant to the thing, it's the last uh, movie I've actually watched from Screen Factory. Um, uh... Oh, you can't kill me. You'll never be able to live with yourself. I've been learning to live with a lot of things. Favorite line from Darkman. That's a very Batman line. It is a very Batman line, and that character was very much like Batman, Spider-Man. Batman, Spider-Man, the Vorschach movie. Very cool. <laughs>